the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. You know, there's something about Pabstet you can't miss. Whether you like this cheese food as a dessert or a sandwich spread, it's that satisfying, mellow flavor of real cheddar cheese. There's no doubt about it. Pabstet is a cheese food with a real cheddar flavor. So ask your dealer for delicious Pabstet. Tomorrow, treat yourself and your family to Pabstet's rich, distinctive flavor at the very first meal. Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food, comes in golden cheddar or pimento. Buy it in a handy-sized round package, or if you prefer, in the economical two-pound loaf. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Every evening about this time, Summerfield's water commissioner can be seen rounding the corner and heading for home. Well, I guess Bronco's calling on Marjorie again. There's his car. What a jalopy. Hope he gets a new car before they get married. Won't be any fun tying tin cans to a tin can. (laughs) Hi, Unc. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hey, don't go in the living room. What? Marge and Bronco just shooed me out. Oh? Are they having another spat? Heck no. They're sitting in there with their heads together, holding hands. Oh? I wonder what's going on. Mr. Gilsley. (laughs) Bertie, don't do that. (laughs) I didn't hear you. Mr. Gilsley, don't go into power. Well, I wasn't going to. Let's move away from here, huh? Now, what's the big secret? Gosh, ever since they got engaged, all they do is whisper. You'd think they both had laryngitis. Leroy, when you get engaged, you're sicker than you are with laryngitis. (laughs) You know what I think, Mr. Gilfley? What, Bertie? I think they're naming the day. (laughs) So soon? Yeah? Naming what day? Naming the wedding day, Leroy. They shoot me out for that? Oh, for corn's sake. All right, Leroy, all right. Yes, sir, that's what I think they're doing. They're naming the day. What makes you think so, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, when them two sit down with a calendar, they ain't counting the days till Christmas. They're naming the day. (laughs) Why don't you go in and find out, Uncle? No, Leroy. They'll let me know when they've decided. I can wait. Of course, they may have already decided I could go in and get the evening paper. <laughs> nice waiting, Unc. <laughs> yeah, guess I'll get the paper. <laughs> well, hello, children. Hello, Uncle Mort. <laughs> hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, their name in the day, all right. <laughs> Excuse me, I just wanted the evening paper. I'm on my way out. Oh, wait a minute, Anki. We've got something to tell you. You do? Now, what could it be? Well, you tell him, Bronco. No, you tell him, Marge. Well, I think you should tell him. Gosh, somebody tell him! <laughs> Go ahead, Marjorie. He's right. Somebody tell me. Uh, tell him, Marge. It was your decision. Well, no, you tell him, Bronco. You're the head of the family. Yeah, Gosh. Well, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bronco? Mr. Gildersleeve, we've named the day. No. <laughs> May 1st, Donkey. May 1st, well. Yes, sir. Marjorie Forrester will be joined in marriage to Bronco Thompson on the first day of May in the year 1950. A.D. <laughs> A.D. Oh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Anki. Well, thank you, Marjorie. Well, thanks, Mr. <laughs> Gildersleeve. <laughs> Gosh, can't you have a wedding some other day, Marge? Well, what's wrong with May 1st? What's wrong with it? That's May Day. It's already a holiday. Why don't you have a wedding on a day a little 
those kids can get out of school. <laughs> Leroy, we don't set the date to accommodate the ring bearer. Ring bearer? <laughs> That's you, my boy. <laughs> Things are going to be popping around here between now and May 1st. I'll have a lot to do. Wedding invitations, reception plans. Now, Uncle Moore, don't you take over. Oh, I wouldn't think of doing a thing like that. Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't, Mr. Gildersleeve, because the wedding plans are pretty much up to the bride. You bet it's up to Marjorie. I can see you now, my dear, coming down the stairs. Down these stairs? Well, naturally, we'll have the wedding here. You'll be dressed in a new tailored suit. Tailored suit? Green, maybe. <laughs> Your old uncle will be waiting on the bottom step, ready to take you on his arm and deliver you to the blushing bridegroom. Now, just a minute, Uncle Morris. That's you, Bronco. <laughs> uh, but don't here you... Here comes the bride. <laughs> what a character! <laughs> Oh, it's too bad. Bronco had to go home. We could have rehearsed the ceremony right here tonight. But, Uncle Mort, I haven't even started planning yet. Well, here's the way I see it, Marjorie. We'll have the fireplace banked with flowers, and the minister will stand right in front of it. Bertie, you stand over there. Me? You're the minister. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uncle Mort, we haven't decided where the wedding's going to be, and after all... Well, that's up to you, my dear. But if it's a nice day, we'll have the reception right out on the front lawn. Wouldn't that be nice, Bertie? Yes, sir. But like you say, that's up to Miss Marjorie. Yes, indeed. It's entirely up to Marjorie. But I thought we'd have the friends of the bride on this side of the room and the friends of the groom. Excuse me, Uncle Mort. I think I'm going to have a headache. Oh? Sorry, Marjorie. You roll upstairs and lie down. I'll take care of everything. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> now, where's my pencil? Better make a few notes here. By George, there's nothing like a wedding. I'll get it out. I'm going over to Piggy's anyway. All right, my boy. Now, let's see. Oh, here. hi, Judge Hooker. Good evening, Leroy. Is the Lord of the Manor in? <laughs> yeah, he's fixing Marge's wedding. Oh? <laughs> Come on in, Horace. Thank you. See you later, Ron. So long, Judge. Well, has the date been set, Gildy? Yep, we've decided on May 1st, Judge. May 1st. Isn't that thrilling? Oh, promise me that someday you and I... <laughs> Uh, Judge, you should be on the stage. You think so, Gildy? Yeah, they've had talking dogs, but never an old goat that sings. <laughs> Gildy? Yeah, sit down, Horace, sit down. I'll tell you what I'm planning for Marjorie's wedding. Oh, are you making the plan? Well, it's already given Marjorie a headache, so I had to take over. Oh, I see. Now, what do you think of a string trio in the hall, Judge? I could get Irving Hotstetter and two of his hepcats... I imagine they can play wedding music. I suppose so, if the Hepcats can slow down that much. Uh, hmm. I didn't know that Marjorie had decided to have a home wedding. Well, of course, it's up to her, Judge. But we could have a beautiful wedding here, right in the home she loves so well. How do Bronco's parents feel about having it here? What difference does that make? As everybody knows, this thing is entirely up to Marjorie. Does everybody know that, Gilbert? Well, if they don't, I'll tell them. Of course, Mrs. Thompson is one of those obnoxious people who'd like to take charge. Oh? Yeah, but she won't get an oar in here. And Mr. Thompson's so absent-minded, he won't know whose wedding he's attending anyway. <laughs> Be that as it may, Gildy, weddings usually run more smoothly if the two families get together for a powwow. We're not Indians, Judge. There'll be no powwow. <laughs> I told Bronco to tell his parents the wedding will be here. And that's the last we'll hear of that. <laughs> Will you repeat that, Bronco? Well, Mother, that's what Mr. Gildersleeve said. He said Marjorie and I would be married in his parlor. Oh, he did, eh? Edward! Oh, Edward! Martha, <laughs> did you hear someone calling me? I called you. Oh, it was you, Martha. Yes. Well, it... I just wanted to know. Edward! Come back here. You'd better come back, Father. This is important. Oh, it is? Well... Edward, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It is? What? Mr. Gildersleeve wants the marriage to be held in his parlor. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. You don't? Well, if Gildersleeve wants to get married, why shouldn't he get married in his own parlor? <laughs> Edward, I'm talking about Bronco's wedding. Oh, is Bronco getting married? 
Oh, yes, yes, of course. Gildersleeve's niece, uh, Marjorie. Now, that's right, Father. There's a lovely girl, Marjorie. Edward, we're driving over to Summerfield tomorrow. Oh, yes, we must attend the wedding. <laughs> oh, Father, the wedding is May 1st. May 1st? Well, no use going tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> good heavens. There's every reason for going tomorrow. I have some ideas about the wedding plans myself. But, Mother, isn't it up to the bride? Yes, Martha. Isn't it up to Marjorie and her, uh, her what does she call him, uh, Uncle Snort? <laughs> no. Uncle Mort, Father. Oh, yes. Well, that's who it's up to, isn't it, Martha? Leaving things up to Mr. Gildersleeve is like, well, just leaving them. We're motoring to Summerfield tomorrow. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, Marjorie, where are you and Bronco off to this morning? We're going skating on the mill pond, Dunky. It froze again last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. I did, eh? Well, skate while you can, because we're going to be awfully busy between now and May 1st. Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, speaking of May 1st, my mother casually mentioned that she and father uh, might drop in to see you today. Oh, are they going to be in town? I think so. In fact, they weren't very far behind me. <laughs> Yeah, that could be them. Yes, yes. Why don't they stay at home and let me handle the wedding? Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Mrs. Thompson. Glad you came over. And Mr. Thompson, well, come in. Hello, Gildersleeve. Nice of you to invite us over. Invite? Oh, yes. Marjorie, my dear child, how are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Oh, good morning, Marjorie. This is certainly an unexpected surprise, but delightful. <laughs> Sit down, everybody. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, Edward and I were in town, and we simply couldn't pass up an opportunity to drop in and say hello. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you did, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> Marjorie and Bronco were just about to go skating. And... Oh, wonderful pastime, skating. If you have ice, of course. If you have <laughs> Well, you children run along. Since the date has been set for May 1st, there are a great many things Edward and I want to discuss with Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mother, if you're going to talk about the wedding plans, I think Marjorie and I should stick around. We're involved, too. Uh, you're not involved, son, until after the wedding. <laughs> Edward. Oh, brother. <laughs> Well, Marjorie, you and Bronco can use your own judgment about staying, but there's no reason why Mrs. Thompson and I can't get together on things. No, indeed. I have the highest regard for Mr. Gildersleeve's opinion. You do? And I'm sure he has the utmost respect for mine. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> now, I thought we'd have the fireplace here banked with flowers. Uncle Moore, you're assuming, Mr. Gildersleeve, that the ceremony will take place here? Well, uh, do you have any objections to a home wedding? Oh, it seems to Marjorie and me uh, Quiet, that... Bronco. <laughs> I think a home wedding can be very impressive, Mr. Gildersleeve. I rather like the idea of the ceremony and the reception held in one convenient location. Well, good. We're in agreement there. But the place should be our house. <laughs> well, we're not in agreement there. <laughs> Shouldn't this be entirely up to Marjorie? Well, obviously, it's been taken entirely out of our hands, Bronco. Oh, no, my dear. I've said all along it's entirely up to you. That's why it should be in your own home. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, you've seen our large living room. Barn. We are much better equipped to handle a large gathering. Well, who said anything about a large gathering? Bronco, please. There are many reasons why we should have the wedding in Broadmoor, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, now, Martha, why don't we hear some reasons from Marjorie's Uncle Snort? Yeah. Uncle who? <laughs> <laughs> That's Uncle Mort, Father. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, why don't we listen to his reasons? Edward, we've been listening to Mr. Gildersleeve for quite a while. And I have as big a voice as he has. Bigger. I beg your pardon. Oh, come on, Bronco. Let's get out of here. Good idea. And then where are you going, children? To the mill pond? Oh, at least that far. <laughs> well, now that the children have gone, we can arrive at a decision. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. What do you think we should do, Mr. Thompson? Well, if there's ice, why don't we all go skating? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a minute. Some salads take lots of fixing, but here's one you can fix in a jiffy, one that rings the bell on every occasion. Pear Salad Pabstet. Just press two pear halves together with a generous filling of rich, delicious Pabstet pasteurized processed cheese food in between. Serve upright on crisp lettuce with mayonnaise or salad dressing. Add a sprig or two of watercress just for looks. You'll draw oohs and ahs every time you serve it. And, of course, that's only one of an almost inexhaustible list of appetizing dishes you can make and make better with Pabstet, the cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. Pabstet spreads readily at room temperatures for sandwich and other fillings. Melts into a rich, creamy sauce for rarebit souffles, omelets, casserole dishes. Cuts in firm wedges when chilled to go with crackers, salads, or apple pie. And any way you serve it, it's delicious. Tomorrow, get Pabstet, the mild cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. Get either cheddar or pimento in the round, handy-sized package. Or save money by asking for the economical two-pound loaf at your grocer's. Well, Marjorie and Bronco have decided to be married May 1st, but there's been quite a to-do about where the wedding will be. The great Gildersleeve wants it at his house. Bronco's parents want it at their house. So far, Marjorie hasn't had a chance to say where she wants it. In fact, she and Bronco left the conference in a huff. Well, Bronco's parents aren't going to tell me how to run this wedding, Bertie. No, sir. Poor Miss Marjorie. Uh, What's this, Bertie? Driven out of our own house. Now, Bertie, we were just trying to help. Yes, sir. Poor Miss Marjorie. Mm. Driven out of her own house by people trying to help. All right, Bertie. She wasn't driven out. She just went skating. Yes, sir. I hope that's where she went. What? If they're going to get all that help between now and May 1st, it wouldn't surprise me if they eloped. Eloped? (laughs) Bertie, that's ridiculous. Say, it's almost dark. Wonder why they aren't home yet. Yes, sir. I imagine you do. But that's Marjorie now. Nope, that has to be Leroy's feet. Leroy, have you seen anything of Bronco and Marjorie? No, nope. haven't seen them since Marge sneaked back and got her suitcase. Suitcase? Zeke. Oh, Miss Marjorie. Now, Bertie. Leroy, when did Marjorie come back to the house? Why, you and Mrs. Thompson were battling. We weren't battling, my boy. Are you kidding? You think you and Mrs. Thompson were getting married? What a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Marjorie. All right, Bertie. I wonder why Marjorie would take a suitcase skating. She always does. She does? Sure, for her skates and stuff. Oh, of course. You see, Bertie, she just took her skates and warm clothes for after skating. That's all that's in the bag. I sure hope that's all that's in the bag. Why, certainly. She'll be back in time for dinner. Don't you think so, Bertie? Well, don't you, Bertie? Bertie, say something. Oh, Miss Marjorie. <laughs> Well, they weren't skating on the mill pond, but I'm positive they hadn't eloped. Bertie's imagination is just running away with her. I'm not going to let mine run away with me. I'm not worried. I think I'll go into Peavy's and get some black coffee. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. (laughs) Gildersleeve. What can your friendly neighborhood druggist do for you? Well, you might give me a cup of black coffee. Very well. Cream? I said black, Peavy. Very well. Sugar? Just plain black, Peavy. Well, sugar doesn't change the color. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I know that. And after coffee has been sitting around all afternoon like this has, sometimes cream doesn't even change its color. <laughs> On second thought, Peavy, you better give me some cream and sugar. That's what I say. Uh. I always believe in giving the customer his money's worth. That'll be five cents. Oh, for here, friendly neighborhood druggist. 
Thank you, Mr. Gerstein. Well, I guess everybody's pretty happy at your house. Why, Peavy? Well, Judge Hooker tells me that Marjorie's being married on May 1st. Well, I hope she waits that long. How's that? You know how impetuous young people can be. Well, I know how impetuous I was. I married Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> you didn't elope, did you, Peavy? Well, I don't mind saying we entertained the idea. But Mrs. Peavy was a little heavy to carry down a ladder. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if Marjorie is thinking about eloping. Well, she didn't mention it when she stopped in here with Bronco, a suitcase, and another young couple. Peavy, why didn't you tell me Marjorie was in here? You didn't ask me. What? <laughs> Talk up, man. Who was with her? Well, like I say, there was Bronco and another couple. Who was the other couple? Well, I didn't know the young man, but the girl was Francie Tyler. Oh, Francie Tyler, Marjorie's best friend. She was going to be the maid of honor. By now, she's probably a witness. My, my... Congratulations, Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't congratulate me, Peavy. I don't believe it. Yeah, that's what the fellow said when he saw his first elephant. <laughs> Tail on both ends. Yeah. <laughs> Peavy, little Marjorie wouldn't do this to me. She's a sensible girl. Well, yes, she is. And I've been a good uncle to her. Mm, yes. Yeah. They wouldn't run away and get married just because Mrs. Thompson and I had a little trouble getting together on their wedding plans. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> oh? Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Tyler. Hmm? Uh, I just thought Marjorie and Francie might be over there. Oh, no, I'm not going to worry. Not me. Goodbye, Mrs. Tyler. <coughs> Wouldn't worry for a minute if Francie hadn't gone skating without her skates. <laughs> Can't you locate Miss Marjorie anywhere, Miss Skills, please? No, Bertie, and I'm beginning to fear the worst. So what if she has eloped, Dunk? Look at all the money you saved. That's hardly a consideration at a time like this, young man. Well, it didn't have to happen this way. Bertie, wonder where they drove to get married. They couldn't get very far in that old car of Broncos. Well, that wouldn't stop them once they got started. And you know what got them started, Miss Gillsleeve? Don't you get started now, Bertie. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess I'd better call the Thompson, tell him what's happened. Still anything as important as this, I should drive over to Broadmoor and tell Mrs. Thompson in person. Gosh, Unc, you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I've asked for it. You asked it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, keep a light in Marjorie's little window, Hero. <laughs> It's going to be hard to break this to the Thompsons. Say, I wonder if Marjorie and Bronco have been here all the time, playing billiards or something. They've got a billiard table. Yes? Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Billiard. I mean... Oh, <laughs> it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, I wondered if Bronco and Marjorie... Somebody at the door, Martha? No, just Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Uh, Gildersleeve? Yes. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Oh, Marjorie's uncle, uh... Mort. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Come in. Yes, do. Uh, oh, thank you. What a family. For two cents, I'd have the marriage annulled. What brings you to Broadmoor, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, uh, Mrs. Thompson, I was hoping... I mean, I was wondering, are Bronco and Marjorie here? No. I thought they went skating. After you so stubbornly objected to having the wedding at Broadmoor. No, Mrs. Thompson. Of course they weren't skating. Bronco told me they'd been skating when I saw him this afternoon. You saw Bronco this afternoon? Well, I guess there's nothing to worry about then. So I saw Bronco in the bank. He was drawing out his savings. His savings? <laughs> yes, $200. $200? Thrifty boy. Yep. <laughs> Did he say what it was for? No, that puzzles me. He said uh, he was going to surprise us. Oh, that does it. Mrs. Thompson, I have a painful announcement to make. Oh? I have every reason to believe that Marjorie and Bronco are married. What? Oh, nonsense. It can't be May 1st already. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Thompson. They've eloped. Eloped? Yes. I'm afraid they wanted to plan their wedding themselves. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. We 
should never have interfered. Oh, oh. Mother Thompson, it's all my fault. No. I should never have insisted they be married in Summerfield. Oh. The wedding should have been held right here. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's my fault. Oh. I should have left it up to you and Marjorie. Uh. Here, Martha, <laughs> my handkerchief. No, Edward. Gildersleeve. Thank you, I have one. <laughs> this is a lesson to me. I'll never interfere with the children's plans again. Uh, neither will I. Oh, oh my goodness. Mother? Oh, oh. Bronco. Huh? Bronco, you're home. Well, sure. Oh, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, come on outside, everybody. I want you to see my surprise. Yes, yeah, no surprise to us. Boy, is she a beauty. Yeah. You should see the red paint job. Red paint job? Marjorie? Oh, good heavens. No, my new car. New car? <laughs> Well, well. This is for our honeymoon, May 1st. May 1st? Did you hear that, Mrs. Thompson? <laughs> yes, and what a relief. Now we can go ahead with plans for the wedding here at Broadmoor. Yes. Yeah. Oh. At Broadmoor? Now, just a minute. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, a moment ago you insisted this was where they should be married. What a sneaky way to get the wedding out of my pocket. <laughs> More about the wedding plans in just a minute. When you fix yourself a midnight snack of Pabstet and crackers, maybe you sometimes wonder why Pabstet tastes so much better than many other cheese foods. Well, the answer is simple. It's that rich, satisfying cheddar flavor. For Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food is made from aged cheddar of real distinction. That's why Pabstet is always mellow and delicious. You can get Pabstead either golden or pimento in the round, handy-sized package. But the money-saving way to buy this many-purpose food is in the economical two-pound loaf. In either package, you get that real cheddar flavor. Put Pabstead on your shopping list tonight. Get some tomorrow. But Mrs. Thompson... Now, Mr. Gildersleeve... Now, wait a minute, everybody... Marge and I have decided we're not having the wedding at Mr. Gildersleeve's house. There, you see? What? And we're not having it at our house either. What? <laughs> Bronco and I have decided we're going to have a church wedding. Church wedding? Well, good. Well, a church wedding solves the problem perfectly. Don't you think, Edward? What problem? <laughs> oh, 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 yes, 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 of course, indeed, indeed. Well, thank goodness it's settled. Sure. We can have the wedding at the church here in Broadmoor. Sh Broadmoor? This woman never gives up. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Yeah, Good night, Jay. Good night, Harold. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You bet. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild, or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.